have never seen a sweet or a candy like this in my life. What is your biggest fear about your shop? Oh, oh this is... Hello guys and happy new year. I'm back in the studio today and I'm bringing you something that's hopefully a little bit of fun because the beautiful Krista from Bubblegum Creations has actually sent me a bunch of like American candy or sweets as we call it here and I'm gonna just do a little taste test and try it out. I've literally never even heard of half of these so it's gonna be really really interesting to try it out but I thought as well I will also answer some fun questions from you guys. Let's just get straight into it shall we so the first candy bar that i'm going to be trying out it's literally called what do you call it it says on it made with chocolate peanut caramel crisps and caramel and it's deliciously crispy so let's give this a try and see what it's like inside oh it's chocolate coated it kind of looks like a crispy bar on the inside here with caramel inside so let's give this a taste Mmm, this is really nice actually. This would be so nice with a cup of coffee. It's really like salty and buttery. I really like salted chocolate and salt salt with chocolate. I really also like a contrast of sweet and savoury. Mmm, that is so, so delicious. That is super, super nice. I'm gonna rate this one an eight out of 10. So we're off to a good start there. The first question is from Lush Spa Paris and she has said, what is the worst thing you've ever tasted? So probably the worst thing that I can think of off the top of my head is actually Beverly. I tried it in Florida. They used to have like this Coke dispenser where you could try like different types of Coca-Cola products. And it literally tastes like something from the dentist. It was so gross. I can't believe people actually drink that. Let me know in the comments if you actually like that drink or if anyone actually does like that. I've accidentally drank paint water before when I was painting. That's not nice. It has like a really chalky taste. Luckily, it was just like watercolor, but I would not recommend that. And soap as well. Have you ever like accidentally like tried soap? I don't know how I've done that before. Oh, and this one time I was baking and I'd put like a soap and glory moisturizer on my hands and like body lotion and I started cooking and everything and my food was tainted by moisturizer really really heavily perfumed and it was so gross what is your favorite thing about your business there is so many things that I love about Katniff first and foremost it's you guys it sounds so so cliche but it really is the community that we're growing it's super super exciting I really am a people person and I do get my energy from other people and being around other people and being inspired and the community that we've grown here on YouTube and on Instagram and on Patreon is so so amazing and really really fills my heart with so much joy to like see other people connecting with catnip and the brand and liking the same sort of stuff as us and really engaging with the characters and everything it just brings me so much joy another thing which is completely on par with that is being able to have the luxury to work with my partner and and my family members. That is super, super cool. It's always been a dream of mine to be able to work with the people I love. Coming into this office every day and feeling inspired and coming into the studio and being able to create these fun and cute characters and putting personality into like cute characters and then making people smile with them and giggling. Oh man, I just, it's just so much more about an Etsy shop and products for me. It's just about a feeling. I'm very like, feeling driven and it just gives me so many good vibes and makes me super super happy even stepping through these doors I was like instantly happy that's why my workspace is always filled with something that's fun and cute and colorful because I want to create that feeling and I want to give that feeling to you guys and hopefully that shows and you guys can tell so yeah that's probably a few favorite things that I love about my business next up we're going to try this chocolate bar which is called a hundred grand now I have seen these before. I'm pretty sure I've seen them before, but I've never ever tried it. And it says it's a rich caramel, milk chocolate, crispy crunchies. That just sounds good as well. And that's just pretty much it. It comes in like two little, can you see it comes in like two little bits? Well, that's handy. It looks like it's got some nugget inside it. Whoa, look at that. It kind of reminds me of a lion bar here in the UK. Mmm, yum. This definitely reminds me 
of a lion bar here in the UK. Not quite the same, but very, very, very similar. And it's super delicious. So it's actually got a chewy caramel bit here and then like a nugget and then the crispy shell covered in chocolate. I would rate that a nine out of 10. I'm doing well with these chocolates. I actually thought that I wasn't gonna like a lot of them, but so far, so good. So the next question is, what is your favorite wild animal? So for this, I'd probably have to say something like a panda, like pandas and red pandas, and then any wild cat. I'm absolutely obsessed with cats, like wild cats, anything. I love watching documentaries on them, mountain lions, and kind of wild cats. If you could invent any way of travel, what would it be? So there would be two things. There would be either time travel, if I could invent that. Uh, that would be super cool. I've always loved the idea of going back in time even just for 10 minutes just to see what it was like I mean who wouldn't want to go back in time I don't know and then also flying like actually like a human flying I always have dreams of like just soaring in the air it's just so therapeutic and I just think the feeling of it must feel absolutely amazing so if I could travel through like super speed flying and me as a human flying without getting frozen to death in the atmosphere I'd probably pick that as well so it'd be a toss-up the next suite we're gonna try is this Idaho spud. So I'm not sure if this is common all across America or if this is a local thing to Idaho, but it says the candy bar that makes Idaho famous. So this is gonna be interesting. It doesn't really give a description of what it actually is. So let's have a look what's inside. It looks like it's got some coconut in there. Oh, look at this. It kind of looks like a snowball here in the UK. You get these like, desiccated coconut things oh what what this is not what i was expecting oh it's really squishy as well so let's open this up oh what so it looks very similar to a snowball where it's got some sort of marshmallowy nuggety stuff in the center it's really squishy and it looks like some sort of dark chocolate and then desiccated coconut on the outside it smells like coffee has this got coffee in it let's just try it the texture is like a little bit weird. Um, it definitely has like a coffee flavor to it. I was expecting this marshmallowy stuff to be more dry, like I'm used to here in the UK, like a, a dry marshmallow. But I feel like it's got a lot of moisture in the marshmallowy squishy bit. Hmm. Mm, I can't decide if I like this one, to be honest. It's definitely different to anything I've really tasted. The closest thing I can think to is a snowball here in the UK, which is like a squishy marshmallow, like a tea cake, and it has marshmallow in the middle. This has a very almost bitter flavor to it, and I think that's dark chocolate on the outside that's giving it that bitter flavor. And I feel like the inside is coffee. So yeah, I'm gonna give it a five out of 10, because it's leaving a pretty bitter taste in my mouth. What is your favorite product you released in 2020? Really loved bringing Bumble Butt into the character lineup and him asleep on like a flower bed. I was really inspired by a picture I seen on the internet where Bumblebee's sleep with the butt kind of hanging out of a tulip. I thought how cute would that be to illustrate and then Bumblebutt was created as a result of that. So I actually love that Bumblebutt and the range of bee products have arrived to the store. My favorite singular product, I actually have to say it's my new greeting cards, even though I messed them up a little bit if you see my last studio vlog. Let's not talk about it, it's still a sore subject. But I really, really just loved how they came out. Other than that, it'd probably be the enamel pins because I get so much joy and excitement and washi tapes. Oh my God, it's really hard to pick actually. Do you have any unexpected favorite everyday studio objects i probably would have to say it's the lighting in this room i know it's not really an object but i am a sucker for a really nice ambiance as we always say i really love to create a feeling of a room and an atmosphere of a room and i feel like having these colorful beautiful lights all in the room lighting it up really really inspires me and i look around and the twinkling fairy lights here and it makes me so so happy it fills my heart with joy like being surrounded by that sort of stuff so i would probably say my favorite favorite is like the actual lighting in the studio and then unexpected favorite objects after that is probably like the cups that I drink out of I don't know about you guys but I really love drinking out of certain crockery and glasses it makes me super super happy I don't know why if I've got a really cute glass or really cute like crockery set or something and I'm drinking a coffee I feel like it makes the coffee taste nicer I don't know I don't know why where would you like to be with catnip in five years time 
So this actually popped up on the questions quite a lot and quite a lot of people asked me this. You almost feel silly for putting it out there but I suppose that it's like the law of attraction and all that if I put it out there but I would love to, in five years time to have an even bigger team maybe like kind of a mini warehouse situation going on where we have like shelves properly and it's all like kind of like a mini warehouse with all our stock. I would also like to have books out so maybe one or two books at least two books would be absolutely epic and then maybe on the horizon some sort of animated thing whether it's a short a youtube series i don't know that would be an ultimate goal of mine can i reach that in five years time we don't know and i probably don't know it's probably going to be pretty high budget to do something like that but some sort of animation two books out maybe and some more products and just building and keep building and just having it grow more and more so that would be pretty epic probably a bigger studio which is even weird to think about now because i've just moved into this studio and have a range of plushies and toys in as well so yeah that would be pretty epic i think who is your favorite character you've created for your biz i'm gonna have to say that Gingy is the OG, he was kind of the first character that I fully realised, like that I fully formed if that makes sense and gave a personality and became kind of a staple of catnip. So I'm going to have to probably say Gingy and Spice because they are the OGs but Gingy was the one who came first and Spice came like a year after, Gingy met Spice like a year after so I'd probably have to say Gingy wins it, he's got a special special place in my heart. A lot of his personality traits and his inspiration was actually based on my fiance Dean because he is the most sweet and wholesome guy ever and a lot of Gingy's personality is heavily inspired by Dean's personality. Not all of him is inspired by that, but definitely a lot of inspiration was taken from Dean, my partner, on Gingy's character building. So he's got a very, very special place in my heart. It's Gingy. Right, next sweet we're gonna try is this Twix cookies and cream. We have Twix here in the UK, but I have never seen a cookies and cream flavored Twix. So it looks like instead of the caramel layer here, it's got like a cookies and cream filled layer. Oh, oh, I was expecting it to be like more soft when I broke it. Also the Twix is brown in the center. So here in the UK, the Twix is like a biscuit, but this is cookies and cream. So I'm guessing this is very similar to like an Oreo biscuit here. And then this is gonna be a, a cream based layer. So let's try this. Mmm, that's like taking a Twix and leveling it up. Yummy, I love that. I'm going to get give that a solid 9 out of 10. I definitely would eat that with like a nice cup of tea. Yummy, I love that one. So the next question is by Boys With Pins. And they have said, what is your biggest fear about your shop? Oh gosh, my biggest fear is just losing it all. I am... Um, so so passionate about catnip and i love it so so much that my biggest fear is waking up and suddenly i've been cancelled or people decide they don't want to support me anymore or they, or they don't like my product or they don't like catnip anymore that is probably one of my biggest fears because i just love the world so much that i've built the catnip world it's just so scary to think that it could all be over tomorrow with things like covid and adapting and all these scary things happening like brexit here in the uk it really isn't a it isn't like it would never happen if that is my biggest fear with catnip is it just it all disappearing overnight and no longer being here so it's a really scary scary thought and sometimes a thought that keeps me up at night if i make a mistake or i say something wrong or customer is upset and it really sometimes keeps me up at night and it's really scary but you gotta believe in that que sera sera whatever it will be will be do you know what i mean but that definitely is one of my biggest fears so we've got sooty o'neill here and she said originally where are you from so i'm from where i am right now <laughs> to be honest i haven't really moved out my small town i'm from a very very small town called redcar northeast of england so i'm from teesside we call this area teesside some people call it yorkshire we who are from this area call it Teesside. Pretty much born and bred here and I haven't left here. This is where I grew up. This is my town that I grew up in. And I'm still living here. So, and I'm surrounded by all my friends and family. And to be honest, I won't really have it any other way. Some people think I'm from Germany because of my accent and they think I'm from somewhere else 
try to speak English, but I'm 100% British and I'm from the northeast of England. This is just the accent. I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry if you thought I was a different language and uh, I'm trying to speak English poorly. This is actually just pure English, so sorry about that. Next up, we're gonna try this sweet called the Big Cherry. And I really don't know what this is going to be, to be honest. I thought it was like a, like a, what's that thing, a gobstopper? But I don't think it is going to be a gobstopper. So let's just have, oh, it's chocolate. Okay, I wasn't expecting that either. So it's chocolate on the inside. I thought this was going to be like a, an actual candy, like a, like on the front, like a red sweet. But it's not, it's chocolate. Okay, I was not expecting that. Oh gosh, it smells really strong. It smells like marzipan. And then it's got like these crispy bits on the outside. Oh, it's really squishy on the inside. Whoa, look at that. What is this? Let's give this a try. I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this. Oh, this is there's so many flavors going on right now. I'm not sure I like this one. There's like a cherry in the center here as well, look. What a bizarre blend of flavors. I have never seen a sweet or a candy like this in my life. I feel like the chocolate and kind of like peanuts, I think it's like nuts on the outside. It doesn't blend well with the really overly sweet, almost sour cherry in the center. It's like almost sour. I don't know. I don't think the two combination, the sourness and the sweetness of the cherry goes with the salted caramel on the outside. It's incredibly sweet and sickly on the inside. I'm gonna have to give that one a two out of 10. I'm so sorry, that is not for me. Just not my cup of tea that. Dean would probably really like it though. Do you ever wake up on the wrong side of the bed? If you do, what do you do to feel better? Yes, I definitely do wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Multiple times a week sometimes, depending on that time of the month, if you know what I mean. To make myself feel better, I actually listen to music or go for a walk. The music really really helps lift my spirits and really really helps get me out of the funk and then we've got neatly simple who said if one of your characters could be we real which one would you choose oh this is super hard as well but back to Gingy probably next up we're gonna try this which is kind of festive towards the end of the festive period and it's Oreo candy canes what the frick I'm so intrigued about how these are actually gonna taste because I literally, like, candy canes are normally like sweet and pepperminty. So how are they gonna take the Oreo biscuit and make it like, like into candy canes? This is gonna be really interesting. Hmm, that's really strange. It does taste like Oreos a little bit. Quite an artificial flavor, but it does taste like the taste of an Oreo. How weird. That's so, how has it done that? It's weird though, because my brain is telling me one thing and then it's like the taste is telling me another. So I'm expecting like a sweet sugary hit and it is sugary, but then it's got that like biscuity flavor. That's really bizarre. I'm gonna give that a five out of 10, I think. I don't know if I would sit and eat these and crave over them, but I think they're a fun, um, a fun festive thing to try. Next up we've got Geek and Bear and she said, just wondering how many hours you log at work? Because you seem to work very hard, girl. Oh boy, this is a hard one because if I'm being honest, my work-life balance isn't probably the best and I'm not one of those people who believes you should push like grinding and hustling all the time. However, because I enjoy catnip so much, I do end up working very long hours and just naturally, because I'm feeling inspired and I want to get stuff done and I want to do projects and get them complete. I would probably say anywhere from nine to sometimes 14 hours. It really, really, really depends on the day and what projects I've got on, sometimes less. Sometimes if I'm super, super tired and I'm really lethargic, only do like a few more hours or whatever during that day and say, right, I'm just doing half a day today because my brain is not working. Yeah, it just depends on the day and what products I ha projects I have on, but usually it's anywhere from kind of eight hours onwards. Um, I don't really have a strict schedule, although that's something that in 2021, I would like to kind of change and get into the habit of doing a more healthy work routine. It's just super, super hard when you're really enjoying or what you're doing or you're really inspired. It's really easy to overwork when you're in that situation and then it, it comes 
back at you in the form of physical symptoms like a really painful neck um, I suffered from burnout before and I had like heart palpitation, trouble sleeping uh, so it comes out physically if you don't listen to those warning signs and take time off but it is very easy to overwork when you really enjoy what you do so when you started filming were you ever self-conscious? Uh, yes and I'm still self-conscious now but it does get a lot more comfortable and easy to talk to you guys uh, as time goes on and when I first started I was very different I was always really scared to show my annoying personality on camera uh, so I kept like a lot of it in and now I'm a little bit more open and just a bit more chilled I think so but I'm definitely a lot more comfortable talking to you guys and being in front of the camera so next up we're gonna try this Kit Kat duo so we have Kit Kat again in the UK but this is a mint and dark chocolate crisp wafers in mint cream oh they smell very strong of mint I actually love mint and chocolate together so I'm guessing and I love Kit Kat so I'm guessing that I'll really like this one look at these how cool do they look mmm it smells so minty so let's try this one yes mint chocolate they are very nice the one thing I would say, and I feel like this about quite a lot of American sweets and chocolate, is the chocolate almost has like an oily taste to it. And I do find that with a lot of American chocolate, which is why I go back to Cadbury's, because Cadbury's doesn't have that almost oily taste. I guess it's what you're used to and what you grow up with. This is very, very nice, but I think I would prefer just a regular old Kit Kat, because when you bite into it, you expect a Kit Kat. But I actually really, really like this. Mint and dark chocolate go super, super well together. So I'm gonna give this a seven out of 10. Okay, we're running out of time because I've been filming for a very long time and also the sun is setting. So I'm gonna lose all the light. Do you ever watch back to your old videos to see how far you've come? Yes, I definitely do. I don't really sit and watch them because I cringe a little bit, but it is lovely to sometimes pop them on and see how different catnip is in such a, a short space of time thinking wow we really have come very far and love documenting the business journey i found it super super fun to look back on okay this lighting is absolutely horrendous but i'm just gonna have to finish it here because there's no longer any light here because the sun is set i'm just gonna fire through a few more questions and we've got kwami here who said what is your myers brig personality i.e INFJ, ESTP, etc. my myers briggs personality is an enfp so yeah if you didn't have catnip, what would you be doing slash working? So before I actually did this, I kind of had like a photography slash graphic design slash receptionist job at um, a local company and I did their social media. So I would probably be doing something like social media marketing, graphic design or photography in that sort of realm. And where will you travel to first when it's okay to travel? So probably somewhere in Europe is probably where I'll first travel to. And then probably Florida to go to Disney. And I'd also love to try Disneyland Paris but I really want to go to Europe and explore more of Europe and um, that would be really really cool and definitely something that's on my bucket list which was meant to be happening obviously in 2020 but that didn't happen so probably Europe and then going back to Disney and we've got Jessica here who said have you ever thought of making plush versions of your characters yes and they are they are actually coming very very soon they're actually in the works super super excited my first character is going to be coming out hopefully hopefully soon so I'm just learning the process of it now I've actually found a manufacturer so yeah that might be coming very very soon so keep your eyes peeled on that I'm super super excited and yeah I can't wait for that to happen and have them in the flesh it's gonna be so cool next so we got Christian Aldrin hello Christian and he said what's the one thing you love about Dean there isn't any one thing I just love everything about him he's so wholesome and so kind and just so caring and he's got the kindest heart i've ever actually met out of anyone i know like anyone i can think of dean is probably the kindest person and kindest hearted person he literally cries over like adverts he cries all the time it's so cute i'm always turning around and going are you crying if there's a slightly emotional scene he's just so so lovely and one thing i love the most about him is his personality i think he's absolutely awesome and that's it that's the end of the video i'm sorry about this really poor weird bright lighting on the side of my face right now but yeah i hope you really enjoyed this video 
video. If you don't know, I actually do monthly Q and A's over on Patreon. With my patrons, I'm sorry I couldn't get through all your questions. Hopefully, this was just a bit of a fun one to get to know me a little bit more. If you have questions related to business, I do go into a bit more depth about them over on Patreon for the Marshmallow Senpai tier. So if you want to ask a question, you want to kind of get a more of an in-depth answer i do do monthly uh, q a's with my patrons if you want to see more q a's head on over to my patreon i'll leave the link in the description but for now happy new year everyone let's see what adventures are ahead of us and see what we can get done in 2021 also let me know which candy bar is your favorite candy bar of all time if you could only pick one candy bar to eat for the rest of your life what would it be let me know in the comments below i'll see you all very freaking soon all right then, thanks so much for watching. Love you. Goodbye.